What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Go back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys um, how I get my good deals and how I avoid scams on Copart. All, like all the time, you guys send me cards on Copart. You're like, is this a good car? Is this not a good car? Um, should I buy from Copart? And uh, honestly, guys, it, Copart can be a little risky just because a lot of there are honestly some scammers on Copart. Um, you guys know that with my i3, when I sent it off to Copart, I could have honestly sent it. I could have just put on a bumper and sent it and no one would have ever known there was frame damage on the car. That being said, I would never do something like that, but there's a lot of other people that will just so they can get their money out of the car. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can tell what cars have been doctored and doctored. It's basically when you guys find a car on Copart and uh, it doesn't look that badly damaged, but if you put in the VIN number on Google, you end up finding out um, that the car was like actually badly damaged and they just pulled out the metal and they just covered things up to make it look better and they send it right back to auction they didn't put any money into the car but all they did is make the damage look not as bad um, but obviously underneath that you have the frame damage and everything you just don't even know because the damage doesn't look as critical um, because they covered it up so long story short I'm gonna show you guys some cars right now um, I actually don't have any on the top of my mind right now but actually I found this G80 M3 I actually want to go look at this in person I don't know if you guys remember but this wasn't my second Sacramento Copart. This has traveled a far ways from Sacramento Copart. Um, but anywho, this is a G80 M3. It looks amazing. This car looks like a million bucks. It's a hundred thousand dollar car. Um, they actually only want thirty five thousand dollars for it, which is a killer deal. Um, the dashboard, everything, the airbags barely look any like like nothing got deployed. Um, just the steering wheel airbag. Uh, again, the car looks great. The only damage is right here. Um, I want to actually go look at it, and yeah, it looks like uh, the frame needs to be chopped off and replaced. Um, the hard thing about you know getting a, a new frame on a car like this is uh, no one's really parting out G80s right now so you'd have to go to BMW to buy all this stuff and that's even if they sell that kind of like the actual frame itself like that so this car it's going to cost a lot of money just because it's such a new car and all the parts have to come from BMW and uh, you know I, I feel like I, I just want to put it out there this guy um, I'm sure he, this is his first time experience buying uh, from Copart or something because I feel bad he bought this car got it all the way shipped out um, actually, so a couple of my friends told me not to get this car and I was like, why? It looks like such a good deal. It'll be an amazing build on the channel. Um, it, it's a great spec manual. Um, I love the, the, the yellow and blue seats. So I really, really wanted, especially for 35K, it's such a good deal. Like, even if I have to dump 20, 30 Gs into it, um, we're only in at 65 compared to $100,000. So um, yeah, I thought it was a killer deal. And I was about to honestly just buy it. Um, but a lot of my friends is like, hey, run the VIN number on Google and just see what comes up. And uh, that's important whenever you guys go on Copart to view the VIN numbers on the cars. You guys do have to be logged into Copart. Uh, but yeah, I went ahead, ran the VIN number on Google. And this is what you guys end up finding on Google. Google doesn't lie. Um, I was honestly astonished. A lot of my friends told me not to bid on this car. They said, run the VIN number. And I was like, guys, the damage does not look that bad. I mean, just look at the pictures. I mean, clearly this looks like exactly what happened. I mean, all the damaged parts are right there. It doesn't look like anyone was covering anything up. I mean, I was like, I mean, it looks pretty straightforward what happened. They hit something, wheel ripped off, hood and, you know, everything got damaged on that side. Um, and I went to go look at it in person and looked, and it didn't look sketched whatsoever, to be honest. When you run it on Google, again, this is how the picture looks right now, currently on Copart. And uh, this is how it looked before. So dashboard was blown, steering wheel was blown, knee airbags are blown. I'm like, okay, uh, there's no gearbox there. Like there's no gearbox right there. And at one point, the transmission and engine, same VIN number, was just sitting on the ground next to the Copart car. So, um, yeah, this is how the car looks right now. I bet you nothing is connected. They just put it right back in there, uh, put a couple bolts on and hold everything in. Uh, but at one point, this is the exact same car. This is how it was on Copart. Same exact damage on the side as well. Um, it, it was just sitting like, like this at one point. So, th honestly, if I was to get this car, I would have, like, been... This would have been way out of my element because um you have to figure out all the wiring if things got ripped out um if you had to replace a bunch of harnesses i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of electrical issues um at this point this car is only good for a part out in my personal opinion as long as the engine and transmission is good which i can't i can't imagine it, it being bad uh, to be honest um as long as the engine and transmission is good this is a good parts car i would never buy this car um for myself uh for a rebuild just because it's, it's just too much stories. I don't know. I don't really know what happened to this thing. It's just crazy how it looked and how it is on Copart right now. Um, obviously, people are realizing after buying the car, it's like, oh wow, this is a mess. It's, I think it went back on Copart like four or five times now. 
So people are buying it and they're getting screwed over. And one guy just keeps screwing over the next person. Um, so don't let that be you guys. Run the VIN number uh, on Google. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys a few other cars now on just some examples of things you can find uh, that you know is, is a red flag. All right, guys, this is another car I was actually gonna buy. It's gonna end in a day, in two hours. This was relisted again. Just another thing to check, guys. Uh, if the car it doesn't actually say over here, it should be saying somewhere over here that the seller um, is it like Geico Insurance, Progressive Insurance, AAA. Um, it normally actually says uh, the car insurance company over here. Um, in this case, it doesn't, which means that this car was purchased from an insurance or someplace and then obviously relisted on Ko-Fi by an individual or a dealer. Um, unless there are insurance, it will state insurance. Otherwise, it won't show it. Insurance typically doesn't try to fake stuff. Like for them, they don't have time to doctor up cars, make them look a little better and put it up for sale. So whatever the damage is, they just send it right off to auction. Whatever they get, whatever they get. Um, sometimes they send out counter offers. So they're not happy with how much they got. But ultimately, they don't try to cover it up and make things look better than it is. Uh, my i3 actually was a uh, insurance car. They didn't cover up anything. Um, the accident was what it was. But unfortunately, it ended up being a lot. It looked, it didn't look as bad as it was. Um, Anywho, this is not an insurance car. This is a car I was actually going to click the buy it now on as well because for $26,000, it's a $60,000 M340i. Um, just from first glance, you guys can see that. I mean, the bumper looks, you know, slightly damaged. The headlight slightly damaged. The hood slightly damaged. Um, looking around over here, uh, car looks like it got hit nowhere else other than the front end. Um, interior looks amazing. I couldn't even really tell uh, that that airbag uh, was like deployed or anything. I, no airbags look like it was deployed. Everything looks great. The only thing that was a little off for me when I was looking at these pictures um, was the cluster. I noticed that the airbag light was on. I was like, if the airbag light's on, like, how come no airbags are deployed? So that's a little off for me. I was like, what's going on there? Did they cut out some kind of airbag instead of replacing it? Um, and then over here in the engine bay, I looked at the, the A pillar or the B pillar, as you call these. Um, this seems a little pushed back more than this side. And for an impact like this, that would not affect it. Like, that should not push back the frame rail a little bit. Um, or the, the 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 pillars, it should not affect those with that kind of a minor hit. So let me show you guys what I found out when I just copied this uh, VIN number and slapped it on Google. All right, guys, and now that we're back on Google, um, you guys can see some more pictures. First things first, on first glance, the first image that pops up, I was like, okay, makes a little more sense. The bumper first off is ripped right in half. Uh, that I did not really notice in the first picture. If you guys actually go back in the video. Um, you guys will see that the listing on Copart had this exact same bumper on the car. You'll see a crack in the middle, but now if you pay attention, you'll notice the crack. Otherwise, you would have never noticed the bumper is actually ripped completely in half, um, which is completely unusable. This frame rail is actually pushed upwards, um, which could also mean that it has some, maybe some even undercarriage damage or some other things going on down there. The hood got pushed back further. The headlight, you guys can see the headlight cracked because actually the crash bar went into it. Um, so I honestly think they ran over something at this point. Um, looking on this side, this side is as it seems. Um, the rear is whatever. Um, here's another picture of the rear. The rear bumper is actually damaged and uh, it looks like it got repainted or something. So could have been a job where they tried fixing things up. But at the same time, the car on Copart um, had the same bumper that was broken back on the car. Could be even covering up the frame rail and everything, um, which is kind of a it's kind of a messed up thing to do. Like I, I would never do something like that. But people, I guess, like they would rather screw over the next person than take a loss. Um, again, if you could go around to the engine bay, this is a little off. Like it's a little off. I mean, it still will need maybe a little bit of a pull. I wouldn't maybe think a frame shop has to do it. You might be able to get away with like just hooking it up to a tree and using one of those like Harbor Freight things. But definitely, definitely something got tweaked there a little bit. Um, let's see if there's any interior picks because I know. So right there, the interior pick, uh, airbag was deployed i think they cut out the airbag because i couldn't really tell um in the pictures on copart that even an airbag was deployed so that was cut out and again guys just to be safe especially if you're new to copart and you're new to buying cars i would always go look at the car before bidding on it recently i figured to see it's taking me some time to find a car and that's because recently i've been noticing a lot of people are just just screwing over other people a lot of people want money right now a lot of people want to do anything, even low things. They want to do anything it takes to make some money on Copart and just make some money back off their cars or whatever. It's a messed up world. Everyone's out for themselves. So look after yourselves, guys, when you go on Copart. And just when you're looking on Copart, make sure, first off, it's an insurance vehicle. That's what I recommend for everyone that's starting off. Just go with insurance vehicles to be safe. Also, the second thing is go check out the car. It's very important. My first ever Copart car was a vandalized car. Um, I'll try to pop up a picture somewhere up here on the screen. 
screen. And my first car was a 335 I got for 1500 bucks. Hit vandalism, runs and drives. I'm like, okay, great. This is a perfect car. It should be an easy build, just cosmetics. End up getting the car home. And I noticed there was these sticker patches all over the car. Turns out the car had about 12 rounds in the car, like 12 bullets through the entire car. Ripped the wiring harnesses, the door panels, the interior, the seats, the dashboard, the steering wheel, the bullets were everywhere. And shockingly, not the engine. I mean, I'm assuming they kept it as a run and drive. But after fixing all of that, and I took it out for its first drive, it was smoking. So another car, another thing also, guys, vandalism does not mean exactly just vandalism. People most likely vandalize the cars themselves. Because typically, let's just say you have a brand new G80 M3 and you took it on the track and you blew the motor. And you're like, oh man, you know, I just blew the motor. Insurance isn't going to pay you out for blowing a motor. You're going to have to get your own motor. If the car was vandalized, insurance would pay you out. So, you know, they don't really care if the car runs anymore. If, if the vandalism was the thing that caused the car to total out, they'll total it out. They'll send it off to auction as vandalism ends up having a bad, uh, you know, a bad motor as well and all that stuff. And you'll never know because the car is there as vandalism. So um, especially vandalism cars, guys, make sure the car starts up, make sure the car drives, make sure it doesn't smoke, make sure the transmission goes in gear, make sure everything mechanically is sound. If everything mechanically is sound, there's no lights on the dash and it's honestly just cosmetics. That might be a really good cop. I love cosmetically damaged cars. It's my favorite cars, whether they're mechanical damage or frame damage. Again, just try to be safe out there, guys. That's all I'm saying. Look at insurance cars. I'm gonna show you guys just an example real quick of how you could tell if it's an insurance car or not. So here's a good example of a car that you guys know was not doctored, not played around with. This is from Farmers Insurance. It says right here, seller, Farmers Insurance. They have their IG, their Facebook. It says straight up, primary damage is front end, uh, secondary damage is rear end. Now, if you guys look around the pictures here, so here's the front end. The good thing is this does look a little bad, but honestly, it's not that bad. As long as nothing was covered up behind it, this is what it was, which most likely it is because it's an insurance company. Typically what happens with insurance companies nowadays, they don't actually have to take the car to the body shop. As long as the airbag is deployed, which this car did deploy two airbags, um, they like to send it directly to Copart. So most likely as soon as they got in the accident, the, the, they called up their insurance. The insurance said, okay, take it to the local Copart. I would know this because I actually, I totaled my M4 and they told me, was your airbags deployed? I said, yes. They said, we don't care about anything else. Just send it straight to Copart. Do not send it to any body shops because they're going to charge the insurance company a storage fee um, and diagnostic fees and all this stuff that racks up like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, body shops know what they're doing to make their money as well. So for the insurance to basically get the easiest way out of this and get, you know, as much money for the car as possible, instead of screwing over people, they just try to avoid all the middlemen and just go straight to Copart, which is a really good thing for people like us that actually like rebuilding cars. Um, what you guys see is what you get. So if looking at the car, the car is enhanced. It does not start. Um, that makes sense because honestly, airbags are deployed. BMWs, if you guys know, they will not start if the airbags are deployed. It's kind of like a safety switch. Uh, but yeah, the damage over here doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit of a buckle, but honestly, doesn't look that bad. doesn't look like the frame uh, behind this would have gotten dented too badly because the bumper didn't rip off. Again, looking in the engine bay, look how clean that engine bay is. Everything looks like the damage did not pass more than the damage appears in the front end, which is a really good sign. Um, again, like this would be a pretty good rebuild for me. I would definitely do this as an insurance car. I feel safe about it. Um, hands down, would honestly, just because of how much I trust insurance, I got unlucky with my last car. But the majority of insurance cars, I would I would like bid no problem cross country and getting the car here. Um, as long as I really do some research on the car itself and make sure how much I know, I know how much the parts are going to be going for. Um, but yeah, guys, if you guys it's your first time ever, um, just because again I I bought some insurance cars like my vandalism three thirty five with bullet holes through it, and then my i three with severe sub frame damage and severe frame damage. Those are both insurance cars, but they didn't cover anything up. I just didn't go there to see the car and actually you know diagnose how bad the damage was i just kind of looked off the pictures and sometimes you really can't see the extent of the damage just through the picture and before i actually conclude the video guys i just want to show you guys for those of you who don't know how to get a car from copart like if you don't have a broker's license or you don't have somebody that can help you get a car um like local dealers can sometimes help you with cars you have to have some kind of connection with them um, for me, how I started out, honestly, is that I use AutoBid Master. Um, how I got to this page, honestly, on Google, I just typed in Copart Broker. That was it. And then uh, Copart Broker, you click on that. It takes you to the Copart website so you feel more safe when you go through trying to hire a broker. You hire them through the recommendations that Copart offer. Um, there's the AutoBid Master, which I honestly use them for the longest time. It's just they tax heavily. So 
Um, they have a security deposit of 400. That's the first thing. Uh, they have a transaction fee of $200, which is, you know, that's whatever. But they also have ridiculous percentage fees as well. So like not only, um, like let's say the cars have $10,000 car, they'll take maybe like 5%. So they'll take 5% on top of the Copart fees and on top of the $200 transaction fee. So on top of all the Copart fees, which is already kind of crazy, they take a heavy fee as well. But for those of you guys who are just trying to get into rebuilds and into, you know, just rebuilding Copart cars or trying to learn how to work on cars, not in for the profit, um, Audubon Master is the way to go. That's how I started. Um, really, really, really good company. Uh, great customer service. I loved Audubon Master when I was using them. It's just their prices are ridiculous. Anywho, you guys can also use other, uh, you know, companies over here. They have their phone number, their contact, their fees, how much, you know, they charge. Everyone looks like, honestly, they're charging $400 and $200 transaction fees. Oh, yeah. So I used to use uh, AAA Auto Sales. Um, they weren't that bad. Their customer service wasn't that great. It took me, honestly, months and months and months to get my title. Uh, so that was actually my first car, which was the 335 with bullet holes through it. It took me forever to get my title. I honestly thought they screwed me over. I wasn't going to get the title. So I stopped putting money into the car until I actually got the title. Um, but end of the day, they pulled through and I was I always felt more safe be, just because I got their contact information through Copart. I feel like these people have to be certified um, through Copart to be on their website. So um, if you guys are trying to hire a broker and you don't know anybody and you're just trying to be safe because the broker is the one handling your title and handling your money. Um, if you want to be safe and make sure you're getting your title and you're getting your cash, try to go on this website. Again, my top recommendation for people who don't care about profits and uh, are willing to probably spend an extra $800 on fees or $600 on fees, but are guaranteed their car and guaranteed their title. Um, I think Audubon Master is the way to go. This is not a promotion for them. Again, their fees are crazy if you go on their website and you can check out their fees um it's it's crazy but end of the day like i said for a first timer not bad make sure to check out your guys's cars at copart make sure to go look at the cars it's, it's very important for your first times um, and actually all the time if you can and then also of course uh just make sure the cars an insurance car uh better safe than sorry i mean you guys could obviously there's other people that are honest people as well that sell their cars but most of the time insurance cars are the best way to go. But without further ado, guys, make sure to smash that like button. You guys always ask me where I get my cars. How do I look for cars? How do I get them good deals? I'm always on Copart. I'm always on OfferUp. I'm always on Facebook. I'm always looking for the next deal. And I'm always trying to just have a fun build on the channel. My goal, honestly, on this channel is to just enjoy a bunch of different cars. Um, so ultimately, the profits are not what I'm in it for. I'm in it for making videos. I'm in it for um, enjoying new and different BMWs because I, I, I don't know. I have this thing where it's like, I love to try different cars. Like I, I, you know, having a nice car is great and all, but I love trying different cars. Uh, so yeah, that is me. But anyways, if you guys again found this video helpful, make sure to smash that like button, please, for your man. I should be getting a build pretty soon on the channel. Um, I did find something that I have my eyes on, and hoping you know it's a 90, 90 percent chance. I'm really excited for it. And uh, and that's gonna have to conclude the video, guys. I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all the next one. Peace out.